Welcome back to game day. It's a big weekend of football so far. The Crows got it off to a big win on Friday night football. The Cats got rolled. Saints were sitting in second spot. They got rolled. Collingwood did the damage yesterday afternoon. They now sit on top of the table. We've got the skipper, Nick Maxwell, in the middle and the Rolls-Royce of the midfield sitting next to me. Scotty Penelope, thanks for coming in. No worries, mate. 81,000 yesterday at the MCG. The biggest home and away crowd ever for St Kilda. About the 38th or something for you. It must be just <laughs> unbelievable to play in front of that sort of crowd every weekend. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, it's good and I suppose it holds us in good stead come finals. Well, uh, going into it, I think the Saints, Robbo, were favourites. Couldn't Easy. score the Pies in big games. Leon led everyone down. They were unbelievable yesterday afternoon. Yeah, they, 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 they were the pressure. I think the word that came out of the St Kilda camp, certainly, and talking, listening and reading about the Collingwood camp, was the pressure that... Collingwood applied to St Kilda yesterday. There's no doubt that would have been the number one thing going into the game. It's not something that we actively talk about every week. It's just something we expect. So some weeks, obviously, is going to be better than others, but it's not something we go into a game and say, that has to be up. It's just something that we expect to happen. Max, you said last segment that you thought you were in all Australian formats. Fair enough, is it? No, he's... That's not true. I've never said that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at the results from the weekend so far. Well, particularly yesterday at the MCG, it was Collingwood. They won by 48 points. Leroy Brown kicked three. Well, Leon Davis, we talk about in big matches. He was terrific yesterday afternoon. And the Saints were, well, unsaints like in defence. They leaked a little bit. Nick Revolt, second game back. Fitness on the improve. But, Max, you watched it. Take it away. I did. I was sitting up in the box and uh, it was good to see the boys get off to a really good start. So Chris Dawes started early for us. Um, this is Dane, through Dane Swan highlights. He's uh, all-Australian form as usual. Uh, I think second in the uh, Brownlow betting. Taking another mark and kicking another. I think the important thing with Swanee is he's actually kicking goals for us as well, which is um, what all the best midfielders do. So that's uh, obviously very important for us. I think we'll uh, have a look at... No, we won't. We won't go through the game. Uh, well, we we'll just have a look three things, but just on Dane Swan. Yeah. He got 36 yesterday afternoon. He's averaging 31. Is his season now, from your perspective, and Scotty, as good as he has been? 2007, he led the Brownlow for a lot of it. He was Mad Monday and wasn't any near the Palladium room. But <laughs> is he a real genuine chance this year? Um, yeah, he has to be. Uh, his form, I suppose, warrants it. And the best thing about Swanee is the last three years, he's been real dominant. What I've noticed different, I suppose, the last four weeks in, in the crowd is his leadership. Um, just the way in games, when games have sort of been there to win a loss, he's the one who's really taken them on board and, and really driven us forward. So he's been uh, really good with his leadership this year. Take us through the game very quickly. Scott, did, did you have an opponent yesterday? Because Swanee ran around and looked like he didn't have a lot of oh, too much attention. Uh, we all know that Jones went to Didac. What was the midfield set up yesterday? Um, yeah, I suppose obviously they had a lot of rotations going through there and so did we. So uh, I suppose after goals and that you work out, work out who you're on. But... As you said, I suppose there was no real hard matchups. Do you think that when, when you do play Collingwood, it's because they rotate so much through the midfield. We were saying earlier that Swanee's probably you can't tag him because he's on and off and he's a burst player. Same with Penelope. It, it's it's so hard to tag you guys just because your your rotations and your moves so quick. You don't know you don't really know where you are. But doesn't that have to be the next involvement in footy? I mean, we're getting players like Penelope. Swan running around getting 30 35, having an enormous impact on games, and people are saying, Well, you can't tag them. Don't we have to start? There's, well, look, there's, there's you can go off with them, but when they come back on, and when you've got blokes that are quick as these guys running in front of you, and you can't, you can't stop them, it's, and they, they give the ball to each other, they share it around, and they, they work well as a team. Maxi, three things you learned from yesterday afternoon? Three things I learned from the game is that uh, Travis Cloak and I might struggle to get back in. We might have to come <laughs> back through the VFL, which is uh, not going to be something I'm looking forward to. Uh, second one is the Saints supporters really have to be important, uh, patient with Nick Rewalt. He's come off such a serious injury. It's going to take time. He's got to regain his fitness. And there's a big difference between training fitness and match fitness. So uh, we know he's a champion and he'll be back. And Lee Brown has been a sensational recruit for Collingwood. I think that uh, a lot of people were critical of the decision to go and get him, but he's really done a great job for us kicking goals now as well, which is just uh, really important for a key forward like him, but he's been our backup ruckman for, uh, for past of this year and a lot of last year, um, and he's been sensational. I think that people should start patting him on the back because uh, he's been really important for us. Those two goals come in the first quarter and the second quarter where the game was still being decided. They were really crucial goals for the club. There's going to be a lot of players, and this is a great sign of how strong you guys are at the moment, they're going to struggle to get back into the 22 who are and have been regular Leading goal kickers, Paul Medhurst a couple of times. I mean, you've got an unbelievable list with no injuries. Yeah, it's good. I suppose it's a good position to be in. Um, a lot of pressure for spots. And 
uh, makes it very competitive at training. What about Nick Revolt yesterday afternoon? Second game back, Hodgie, uh, and Maxie said, be patient, the fitness will come, big injury, hard to come back. Yeah, I guess it's, uh, he's just got to build up his time, I guess. It's the same as Josh Gibson when he came back after a long stint off, that you want to play him 60, 70% until they get re really fit, because the, the high intensity game these days, you can't have blokes just coming and playing 90, 80, 90% 90 of the game. So the more they play, he's going to have to hold on, and just as long as he's fit and ready to go for the first final. Scotty, we're just going to go to a break, but you have had big injuries and you've come back. How long does it take mentally to get fully confident again on the football field? Um, I suppose I haven't suffered what Nick went through, but yeah, definitely after the first, first few weeks, you start to feel back in touch, you know, probably two or three weeks. Pies are on top of the table. The skipper, he's coming back through the two. Scotty Pendlebury says he's in all Australian form. Buddy Franklin is a guest. He's coming up later in the show, and Scotty's staying with us. And plenty of footy still left on seven this afternoon. <laughs> Guys, you look amazing. What are you, Moshi? Yeah, you're not bad. Pretty happy with the back part. <laughs> <laughs> Dee Swan, three votes. Uh, humor at its best. <laughs> Probably a good idea at the time. No, it wasn't. It still wasn't. <laughs> well, uh, just talking about Brownlows, we asked uh, our viewers on Friday night who do you think will win this year's Brownlow medal? Ablett, Hodge, Swan, Judd, Other. And according to you, you got another three votes yesterday afternoon in Tasmania, is that right? Far from it, mate. Far <laughs> from it. Scotty, you got a view on the brown at this point in time? Um, gee, oh, I don't know, it's hard to pick, I suppose. <laughs> Hodgie. Um, Hodgie is standout, isn't he, at this point? Aaron yeah. Sanderland? Yeah. Aaron Sand Sanderland? Yeah, I suppose. Can't miss him, so. You know Paul the Octopus, Robbo? Not really. I you haven't met him? No, I, but I, I haven't I was, really seen I was, him. I was following. I was following the uh, blue ring Octopus on there and making sure I had a good look at him. Paul is... Eight from eight in regard to picking soccer matches that uh, relate to Germany initially, and then he picked the World Cup final, got Spain. We texted and tweeted our little friend Paul, and this is what he had to come up with in regard to the Brownlow. We put a couple of these little glass cabinets in his uh, aquarium. He's only got six months to live. He's two and a half, and he's about buggered, but he, uh, he came up with Dane Swan. Well, I think he's a smart he's, right. octopus. he's a clever man. <laughs> well, Doggies Port at Darwin last night. Plenty of heat. Doggies, see, quick hands. We're staying out of this one. You're going head to head with Scotty Pendlebury. I am. I want to ask Scotty Pendlebury a few questions, mate. Is it true you've struggled with a coin toss in the last few weeks? Um, um, few. Yeah, but I've won four from four, so that's all that matters. <laughs> that's a lie. Um, <laughs> how many exactly. weeks has it taken to grow that little mo there? Um, I shaved yesterday, so it doesn't <laughs> come to a matter of hours. <laughs> Lying again. Now, uh, you and your missus have just moved into uh, your new pl place down in Newport Williamstown there. New, uh, newly renovated. Yeah, newly renovated. What's next? What's the next step, mate? Is it? Uh, is there a um, ring on the finger soon? Hopefully, or? get another house soon. Yeah. Um, Going well down the column. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Obviously, nah. getting far too much overpaid, mate. And uh, best captain you've played with? Uh, probably Burnsy. <laughs> Burns your bucks. I don't know. Everyone so far that I've played under the <laughs> Well played yesterday afternoon. Mate. Well done to the pies flying along. Thanks for coming in this morning. Plenty more on game day, including Buddy Franklin. He's a star. He's not so far away.